94% of life on this planet is aquatic. That makes this an ocean planet. We're the only falls that haven't figured that out yet. Inventor, engineer, adventurer. Graham Hawks is out to change the way people look at exploring the underwater world. You know, I'd say to all these people building rockets, and there's a few of them, you know, gentlemen, your rockets are pointing in the wrong direction. You're 180 degrees off course. Turn them around and let's, let's go back down there. The team at Hawks Ocean Technologies, a private company based in Point Richmond, is now building revolutionary underwater craft designed to unlock the treasures of Davy Jones Locker. And there's much to explore in the pitch black depths of the world's oceans. There's a thing down there with an 18, 15 inch diameter eyeball, the giant squid. But human beings have never had an eyeball to eyeball encounter with a giant squid. It's one of our goals. But think about it, we share a planet with a 55 foot long animal human beings have never seen yet. So you think this planet's explored? I don't. To meet the creatures of the deep blue, you have to be able to keep up with them. To do that, Hawks vehicles are designed to fly like underwater airplanes. When we say they're underwater aircraft, we're not being cute. They are underwater aircraft. The, the mathematical principles uh, of lift, drag, are exactly the same in air as water. This is designed to the same basic set of mathematical equations that an aircraft is. That's why they look like, smell like, and fly like aircraft. This is not the way traditional submersibles work. Most deep sea craft are enormously heavy and need an expensive infrastructure to operate. They also tend not to have a wide range of movement. Picture the way a blimp navigates the sky. Normal subsea craft have followed the same basic principles, but instead of being lighter than air, they make themselves heavier than water. So they're sinkers, <laughs> they're just plain dumb sinkers. And because they sink, they can be heavy, fat, and dumb. They don't really care, they sink down, and then typically we have little thrusters on them, and they go, yeah, and they kind of maneuver a little bit, and then when you want to come back up, you either pull a lever and drop some weight, or you blow air in if you're shallow and blow some water out. And then they come by it and they just kind of goofily come back up again. If normal subs are like blimps, Hawk's submersibles are fighter planes. His Deep Flight One and the two-seater Deep Flight Aviator each fly through the water using propellers and hydrodynamic wings. Both are positively buoyant, so left on their own, they float. You know, an airplane, people kind of understand how that lifts up into the air. It's heavy, gravity wants to put it back down. Think of our submersible as, as an aircraft where, where the buoyant forces want to push it back to the surface, so we have to fly down. So the first thing we need is some thrust and speed. We need a surface takeoff run. We only need about two knots, but we have to get up to that speed and we put the nose down and, and you fly it down. It's actually being pushed down by dynamic forces on its wings. And you cut the throttle, pull the nose back, and she'll glide back up. You can just fly her back to the surface silently. And, and we do that to be very quiet so that we're much more likely to encounter the animals that we want. It's very, very cool. It's like gliding. <laughs> gliding in this alien planet where, where there's these big strange animals all around you. Uh, uh, uh. Unlike an airplane in the sky, these micro-light subs can also stop their forward momentum and maintain a hover-like position. When we're flying underwater, we're using Bernoulli's equation. We're using the same math as flight. But when we stop, what are we? Well, we can be almost neutrally buoyant. We have the weightless kind of function of a spacecraft. And we're kind of a cross between an airplane and a spacecraft. Now you know why we can fly, but then we can stop and hover with a small amount of energy. We don't have to have huge amounts of energy. Oh, he just crossed over the top of my head about, oh, I don't know, just so close. Our goals are split. One is to carry on to keep going deep, and the other one is to take, take underwater flight and see what we can do with that. For, the, for grins. 
Graham Hawks and his team have used their submersibles to search for shipwrecks, study marine life, even film underwater movies. Now they want to fly to the deepest place on Earth, Challenger Deep, off the island of Guam. 36,201 feet below the Pacific in the Mariana Trench. It is no secret. I mean, we've been saying shooting for full ocean depth, 37,000 feet, and saying we can do it for a long time. And the reason we believe we can do it is because the U.S. Navy developed some pretty advanced materials a while back. In 1960, the U.S. Navy Bath Escape Trieste made a historic record-setting voyage to the bottom of Challenger Deep. For the first time, man would be able to travel to the deepest parts of the ocean and to scientifically probe the mysteries he'd been so curious about for so long. Divers Jacques Picard and Navy Lieutenant Don Walsh were confined to a six-foot diameter, 14-ton spherical steel capsule at the base of the bath escape. It took nearly five hours to reach the sea floor at around 35,800 feet, nearly seven miles underwater, or roughly 7,000 feet lower than Mount Everest is high. The crushing pressure at that depth exceeds 16,000 pounds per square inch. Imagine the weight of 50 jumbo jets stacked on top of you. In the nearly 50 years since the Trieste broke the record for extreme depth, no one has ever gone back to Challenger Deep. In fact, nobody has even come close. Hawks and his team want to change that and fly their subs to the deepest points on the planet. But for their small subs, there are some pretty big hurdles. There is currently a depth brick wall, and it's about 20,000 feet, that we can't get conventional materials, titanium primarily, to give us enough strength to build those capsules. So one of the things we have to do is to contain the problem. Thrusters will work at full ocean depth. That machine will quite happily fly at full ocean depth. The only thing is the pressure hole will. So to go deeper, we actually have to go to more exotic materials. And, and that's what we're looking at and experimenting with. We have everything else. We just need that. New ceramic technologies or even glass may hold the answer. Once the final piece of the puzzle falls into place, underwater deep flight may hold the key to opening up whole new worlds. The unexplored portion of this planet the total of that amounts to all of our land mass, all of our nations, then add the surface of the moon, then add the surface of Mars, and now you, you're about the unexplored territory that's out there. So now you understand why we're grinning, because we actually love exploration. <laughs>